Drill Sergeant. We're going to be dealing with fleshly weapons opposed to spiritual weapons. This is drill number one. Fleshly weapons opposed to spiritual weapons. Another nugget for fiery trials. Jewels being collected by God. Let me say right from the start that some people will love this talk and others will despise it. Yet because of the various kinds of teaching on spiritual warfare that are being circulated throughout the nation today, I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to include this information. Instead of magnifying the victorious work of Jesus Christ over Satan and our deliverance from Satan's power, much of what is taught today implies that the work of the cross is unfinished. That the blood saved us, but it did not really free us completely from Satan's power. Though this may not be the intent of some of those who teach on spiritual warfare, it's often the message that is being perceived. The fruit of this is a new form of spiritualized legalism. In other words, what Jesus Christ did was not enough by itself. Therefore, you must now do additional things in order to gain additional freedom from the devil's control. In reality, this is the equivalent of trading one form of bondage for another. And the second bondage is much more dangerous than the first. For it comes in the guise of spirituality. And at least at first, it is very difficult to discern. In regard to such man-made fleshly weapons and fleshly techniques, Paul says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. Notice Paul says, For though we walk in the flesh, the word walk is taken from the word peripatio, and it is a compound of the words peri and patio. The word peri means around, and the word patio means to walk, like pitter patter. When the two words are compounded together, peripatio, it simply means to walk around, or to habitually live and carry on in one general vicinity. By using the word peripatio, Paul is making a very strong message about his humanity. The idea is, nearly everything I do, I do in the flesh. I eat in the flesh. I recreate in the flesh. I sleep in the flesh. I think in the flesh. I study in the flesh. Nearly everything I do, I do in this realm of the flesh. My life primarily consists in this earthly realm. As a matter of fact, the Greek tense used here is the locative sphere of influence. This is extremely important. Quite literally, this meant that Paul knew he was locked into his fleshy body, and he could not get out of it, and neither could he trade it for another. He was body bound. This state of being body bound would never change until death, when his carnal natural body would be gloriously transformed into a spiritual body. The very fact that Paul said we do not war according to the flesh tells us that Paul was aware 
of the weakness and futility of his own natural man, he knew there was no hope of accomplishing anything good through his carnal man. Drill sword cut. He knew he could not accomplish anything good through this carnal man. Therefore he turned toward the spirit realm where supernatural assistance was and is available. Drill sword cut. Supernatural strength is available and assistance is available to you. Another nugget for a fiery trial. Jewels being collected by God. Fleshly weapons opposed to spiritual weapons. Drill Sergeant.